Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Public Land Alphabet. In this video, we're going to talk about the BLM part of the alphabet. BLM stands for Bureau of Land Management. And in the past video, when we talked about USFS, United States Forest Service, you're going to see a lot of parallels between how the BLM operates and how it's structured, and how the Forest Service operates and how it is structured. The reason you need to know a lot about the BLM and how it operates is they are managing 245 million acres of your land. Land that you can go and hunt and fish and camp and hike and do whatever. That's a lot of land that the BLM manages of ours. And there's 700 million other acres that are called subsurface acres that have minerals and other things that the BLM manages for you and for me and for us. So one of the things about the BLM, they operate under this thing called FLIPMA, Federal Land Policy and Management Act, which requires multiple use, like this guy coming right here. He's coming up here and he's gonna use public lands just like I'm using public land. That's the beauty of our public lands multiple use. There might be logging, there might be mining and grazing, and there's going to be some areas that are just for recreation, there are some areas that are just for whatever. So, because these are our lands, Congress has the oversight, they control the budget, they control the policy. And the way that chain of command works is the Department of Interior reports to the House of Representatives, the House Natural Resources Committee, which is the, has a chairman of Congressman Rob Bishop from Utah, and on the Senate side, it's the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources, the chairperson being Senator Lisa Murkowski from Alaska. So, because these are our lands, our elected officials are the ones who oversee their management. They tell the Secretary of Interior, Secretary Ryan Zinke, this is your budget, this is our policy, go do this. So much like with the Forest Service, the feds, i.e. when someone says, oh, the damn feds, the damn feds are the people in Congress, the Senate and the House who are managing these lands. They can say what they want, but these lands are technically managed by us, the people, via voting for House of Representatives and the Senate. In the day-to-day -day activity of how the lands get managed on our behalf, it comes to the Department of Interior which the BLM is one of the agencies under the Department of Interior. They are the agency that manages the largest chunk of land in the United States, your land. If you're looking on a map because you're going hiking or hunting or camping or whatever, these BLM lands on your surface map or on your Onyx smartphone app are gonna show up as yellow. And those lands are open for you to go and do all the things we love to do. I don't know how much hunting I do on BLM lands, Bureau of Land Management lands, but it's a lot. And you should go do the same. If you watched the video, the prior video about the Forest Service, you remember that the Forest Service pays its taxes to the county via a program called SRS, Secure Rural Schools. Well, on the BLM, they have a similar program. It's called PILT, P-I-L-T, Payment in Lieu of Taxes. And if Congress decides to fund the PILT program, the local counties get their taxes. If Congress says, no, we're gonna lower the amount that we're gonna pay or appropriate under PILT, the counties get less in taxes. So if anyone ever tells you, well, these BLM lands don't pay anything to the counties, horse hockey. The only reason that would happen is because your elected official decided, I don't wanna pay my taxes this year. Another value that the BLM lands add to the local governments, the counties mostly, sometimes the states, is they share the royalties received. They will share the oil and gas royalties. They will share grazing fees. All of the fees that the BLM collects, they have a sharing program with the local governments. So these BLM lands that we all own, your BLM lands, have some unbelievable hunting, some great fishing, all kinds of wildlife watching and viewing. 
They are some of the greatest treasures in America. They're your land. You need to participate in their management. And much like the Forest Service, you do it the same way. Your local BLM office will have multiple public meetings anytime they're going to change a management plan. In most instances, the BLM uses an acronym RMP, Resource Management Plan. You get to comment on that, whether it's going to the public hearings. They hold public hearings in all these little communities. Or if you want to comment online, if it's not something formal, but you just have a concern, you can call your elected official and say, hey, this concerns me. I want to see this happen on my lands. I want this. I want more of this and less of that, or less of this and more of that. They're your lands. As much as people might say, no one listens to me, a lot of times you got to pick up the phone or get online and you got to make your voice heard. That's part of what comes with being a landowner because you are a public landowner just like every citizen in America. And these BLM lands are yours and they are wonderful. You need to come out here and enjoy them. BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Thanks for watching.